Saturday will go, Sunday will go, and Monday will come, and you'll go back to the class. And like this, this teacher by name Mrs. Thompson entered the class for the first time. And she had this habit of starting her class by saying, Love you all. But she knew she was lying because she could not feel that love for one of the students in the class who was very unkept, untidy. And there was nothing in the child that drew attention from Mrs. Thompson. She was little indifferent to the child. She picked him for every negative example and ignored him for all the positive reasons. That year, she had written the progress report for the first quarter. And it was a system in the school that the headmistress have to countersign every progress report. The headmistress called for Mrs. Thompson and told Mrs. Thompson, a progress report should report some progress. It should make a parent feel, my child has a future. The way you have written the progress report for Teddy, that is how he was called. The way you have written the progress report for Teddy, parents will give up on Teddy. Mrs. Thompson immediately said, there is nothing I can do, I have nothing positive to write about the child. Immediately the headmistress asked the administrative staff of the school to trace the old year progress reports of Teddy and send it across to Mrs. Thompson's class. Mrs. Thompson saw the third standard progress report and it was written, the final remarks, Teddy is the brightest child in the class. She was stunned by what she read. She saw the fourth standard progress report and progressively all the remarks suggested that Teddy's mother was suffering from terminal cancer. She is not able to give the attention she used to give to Teddy. And it's just beginning to show up on the performance of Teddy. The fifth standard progress report read, Teddy had lost his mother and along with that himself. He desperately needs help, otherwise we will lose this child. By then there were tears in the eyes of Mrs. Thompson. She looked at the principal and said, I know what to do. And she went back to the class. Probably it was a Monday morning. She walked into the class and again from the dais of the class, looked at the class and said, love you all. But she knew she was lying. The love she was feeling for Teddy right now was far, far greater than the rest of the class. She decided that she is going to change her approach. For every positive reason, Teddy's name was called. There was no more a negative reference to the whole thing. The last day of the school came. All the children had brought some gifts for the teacher. There was only one gift which was wrapped up in a old newspaper. Somehow the sense of a teacher, she could knew that it must be from Teddy. She opened that first. A half used perfume bottle and a bracelet from which a few stones had already fallen was there. The whole class laughed knowing it was from Teddy. But without saying anything, Mrs. Thompson just took that half-used perfume bottle, spread it on her over that bracelet. With a quarter smile, it seems Teddy told, Now you are smelling like my mother. This is the last perfume that she used before she left me. And this is what was removed from her body before she was taken into the coffin. One year later, end of the school, end of the year, there was a letter on Mrs. Thompson's table. I have seen few more teachers, but you are still the best teacher I have ever seen with love, Teddy. Every year till the end of the year, Ted, Mrs. Thompson used to get this letter from Teddy. I have seen few more teachers, but you are the best teacher I have ever seen, Teddy. Years rolled by, they lost contact. Somewhere an agent traced Mrs. Thompson, who had retired by now, and handed over a letter. And the letter was signed, Dr. Theodore, PhD. Teddy had gone on to become a PhD. And the letter read, I have seen many more people in life, 
Mrs. Thompson, this is your teddy. You are still the best teacher I have ever seen. I am getting married. And I cannot dream of getting married without your presence. Along with that enclosed were to and fro flight tickets. Mrs. Thompson couldn't resist. She no more had the perfume bottle, but she still preserved the bracelet. She wore that and went to the church. She was trying to sit in the last row, but volunteers identified and assured her right to the front row. And right in the front row, there was a seat with a placard written, Mother. Theodore personally asked Mrs. Thompson to sit in the chair and whispered, You are the closest to my mother that I have ever experienced. And whatever I am today, it's because of you, ma'am. The wedding happened. And after the wedding, Theodore introduced Mrs. Thompson to his newly wedded wife. Without her, I wouldn't be where I am today. There were tears in Theodore's eyes. It seems Mrs. Thompson told the newly wedded woman, without Teddy, I would have never realized a teacher first, must first be a mother to every student of hers and only then a teacher. <clears throat> this is just my request to all of you. There is a teddy sitting in your class. When you go back to your classroom on Monday morning, there is a teddy in that class and you can be that Mrs. Thompson. Please, on Monday, don't go back to the institutes as a teacher. Go back as a parent who can also be a teacher and be a turning point in the life of those children. You plus me. I believe we can build a new world.